Catholics are called to trust something greater, called by someone, Jesus Christ. When we receive the Eucharist, we are physically touched by Jesus. His body given daily, his blood poured out. Through communion, they encounter his real presence and others who share the faith. Brooklyn is here. This is the moment these two pilgrimages have been waiting for. These groups are heading back to their parishes filled with memories that will last a lifetime. They become one and a light for others. This is New York, this is Brooklyn and Queens. That's the gospel call to make disciples of all nations. People are coming. We have the same fervor, but um, a lot more people. The time is now, the Eucharistic Revival. of Christ, 6,500 pilgrims filling Louis Armstrong Stadium for the Diocese of Brooklyn's Eucharistic Revival. Hi, I'm Christine Persichetti. After months of preparation and years of catechesis and prayer, people of faith were able to come together for this massive diocesan event. Currents News was there with team coverage, and we begin with Katie Vasquez, who tells us about how the day unfolded. <music> From the musical acts and performances to the singers to the 6,500 people sitting in the stands. The colorful mosaic of the Diocese of Immigrants was represented from the top tier to the floor of Louis Armstrong Stadium. The goal of the Diocese of Brooklyn's Eucharistic Revival to not only bring everyone together, but to help parishioners experience Christ's true presence in the Eucharist. Just to be able to have that communion with everyone in the same and get closer uh, with the adoration, especially with our, the bishop, it's very, it's very uh, uplifting. Brooklyn's Vicar of Evangelization and Catechesis, Father Joseph Jabino, helped plan the event. And he says that idea was at the heart of the diocesan celebration. The moment for us to be touched by the Lord, but also when we receive the Eucharist, we are physically touched by Jesus and, and we touch Jesus' heart. Young people were also a big part of the program. The Eucharistic Revival began with high school students like Shade and DeLeon praying the mysteries with the rosary. It's at a time where I needed it because right now I'm so like um, pushed in with a bunch of work at school that I thought like just taking a break to pray do the rosary with like a bunch of people would just be like so great. Bishop Robert Brennan celebrated mass in the stadium's court and addressed the young people in his homily, calling on them to develop a deeper relationship with Christ through the blessed sacrament. We begin by knowing and loving Jesus and then we can believe in his presence in the blessed sacrament. Bishop Brennan also sent a message of encouragement to dozens of neophytes or those baptized at the Easter Vigil who attended the Mass. One of them, Melina Lopez from Blessed Sacrament Church in Jackson Heights, says being here helped to affirm her new faith. It's something really important to me in my life, which it makes me happy and it makes me want to be closer to God. And of course, this day centered on Christ ended with Christ. Bishop Brennan processes with the Eucharist around the stadium, once again reminding Catholics of a core tenet of their faith, that the Eucharist becomes the actual body of Jesus during the Mass. As Bishop Brennan walks with Christ through the crowds, he says he can feel their faith grow. The Holy Spirit brought us here together today, and it was just beautiful beyond words, um, just to see the faith and the devotion of so many people um, who were really alive alive with love, alive with devotion. After hours of praise and adoration, these groups are heading back to their parishes filled with memories that will last a lifetime. Some are even preparing for the next Eucharistic Revival event, the National Eucharistic Congress in Indianapolis this summer. In Flushing Meadows Corona Park, Katie Vasquez, Currents News. 
for thousands of people at the stadium, the journey to the Eucharistic revival was just as spiritually fulfilling as the event itself. Bishop Robert Brennan led one such journey as hundreds of pilgrims flooded the seven line for their commute to Christ. Current News Jessica Easthope traveled along and has that story. Early Saturday morning, it was raining cats and dogs, but that wasn't stopping anyone from riding the rails to the Diocese of Brooklyn's Eucharistic Revival, including Bishop Robert Brennan. Looking forward to meeting all of our people. Some of them are walking in from different directions. We're going to be coming from all over today. The NYPD's Transit Bureau and MTA officials pulled out all the stops so the bishop could fulfill a promise of his priesthood meeting people where they are. That's what we're about. That's what the Lord himself did, right? We want us to be renewed in our reunion with each other as a family of God and um, be rejuvenated in our belief in Jesus present among us in the Eucharist. The bishop hopped on the seven train at Court Square and right there with him were several groups of mostly Spanish speaking pilgrims. One of them, Patricio Valencia, a parishioner at St. Bartholomew's in Elmhurst, says representation at the Eucharistic revival makes him proud to be a Catholic. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, the diocese, because try to unite all the communities, all the cultures. That, that's, that's good for us, for everybody. This pilgrimage was one of two happening Saturday, as this group filled the subway with songs of Christ's love. Other groups walked to Louis Armstrong Stadium. Santa Salomon, a parishioner at St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church in Bushwick, couldn't stop smiling, knowing a day of joy and worship awaited her at the end of the line. The truth of Christ's presence in the Eucharist is hers to live out. We have to believe it. It is real. And just being part of this, it just makes everything more, um, more real than so true to me. Once the train arrived, Bishop Brennan led the crowd toward their final stop. We're on the pedestrian bridge heading to Louis Armstrong Stadium, and this is the moment these two pilgrimages have been waiting for. The people who were walking from their church and the people taking the subway with Bishop Brennan are finally merging and meeting up, heading to the Eucharistic Revival. Bishop Brennan greeted all those in line as they waited anxiously to get into the Eucharistic Revival. The Brooklyn is here. Their pilgrimage was done. And yet a new day begins. We start our celebration. In Flushing Meadows, Corona Park, Jessica East Hope, Currents News. While well, some took the subway, others got to the massive gathering by walking with Christ. Three parishes within two miles of the venue, Our Lady of Sorrows and St. Leo's Parishes in Corona and St. Michael's Church in Flushing processed to Louis Armstrong Stadium. Despite the rain, hundreds turned out, ranging from infants to seniors, some wearing rain ponchos and others donning special yellow shirts for the occasion. Enjoy the day. Regardless of how the almost 7,000 people got there, once they arrived, they were greeted with a special edition of the tablet. Employees of the paper's parent company, DeSales Media Group, handed out the exclusive pullout that was only available in print at the stadium. The historic document featured articles from the past two years explaining how the Eucharistic revival went from a concept to a reality in the Diocese of Brooklyn. The executive director of news and development at DeSales, Vito Formica, spoke about the Moment, saying it was an honor for the tablet team to be able to provide a special edition of the diocese's legacy newspaper to the thousands of pilgrims who attended. Seeing all of the stories that led to this glorious day in the special section really made it an addition to hold on to for the memories. While it's too late to get your hands on that piece of history, you can still read the entire special pullout online at thetablet.org. From the preparation to the pilgrimage to prayers, Bishop Brennan has been leading the Diocese of Brooklyn in this Eucharistic revival. In his homily during the event, he gave the people of faith present a lesson in getting closer with Christ. You're here today because you love Jesus, no? And so with Peter we say, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We've come to believe and we are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. 
Here is the first step in Eucharistic revival. Before we can speak about belief in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, we must have that real encounter with Jesus. It's necessary to believe that he exists, that he lives even today, and that he is concerned for me, for you. We need to know him, not simply to know about him, but really to know him, to love him, and to see him as relevant in our lives. You can hear even more of Bishop Brennan's message to the faithful at the Eucharistic Revival online at CurrentsNY.tv. There's a lot more news headed your way, including this woman's testimony. The baby don't have any problems and she's a good baby. Why she credits the body of Christ for saving her niece's life. Plus, how Eucharistic adoration led this priest on a path of serving God. And now that the event at Louis Armstrong Stadium is over, we look forward to the national pilgrimage to Indianapolis. Welcome back to this Currents News Special. The Diocese of Brooklyn's Eucharistic Revival is part of a nationwide campaign to help Catholics get closer to Christ in the Eucharist. While the first Eucharistic miracle on record dates back more than a thousand years, people credit adoration with helping them through their own troubles each and every day. Currents News' Jessica Easthope went to an adoration chapel in Woodside, Queens that is doing just that. Victoria Chacho, has newfound peace. It came after years of struggle and sadness. My husband was an alcoholic during our whole marriage. We started living separately for a couple of years, but I came because I wanted to put my marriage in Christ's hands. Her marriage was on the brink of broken, but the time she spent here at the St. Philomena Adoration Chapel at Corpus Christi Church in Woodside brought it back. I showed people that you can persevere even through the darkest times. By February, my husband looked at me and decided to make a change. Now he doesn't drink anymore and we are happily together ever since. The people on these pages come day and night to be in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Of course, they had their own stories and miracles happen. Monsignor Jonas Achacoso, pastor of Corpus Christi, has heard of many personal miracles over the 15 years since the chapel opened. The National Eucharistic Revival has drawn more people in. Pre-pandemic, it was the only adoration chapel in Queens, and people are coming 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We have the same fervor, but um, a lot more people. People come and go, but the chapel is never empty. It has guardians, people who are assigned times to be in adoration. And I come in on Thursday, 11 o'clock. It's a job Adam Morales takes very seriously. I feel like he's my friend because he listened to me and, and never leave alone God. Anna has been coming to the church for 14 years. She started when her four-year-old daughter Elizabeth was diagnosed with epilepsy. She says the Blessed Sacrament is to thank. She's now a healthy 18-year-old who needs no medication. Yeah, she's happy, she's healthy. And most recently, Anna's niece, who was pregnant with twins, lost one of the babies in utero. Her doctors pressured her to abort the second, saying she would die soon after birth. So Anna once again turned to the Eucharist. Her grandniece, Mia, is now four months old and thriving. So I come into the here the Adoration Chapel and the baby don't have any problems and she's a good baby. Monsignor Jonas can only explain what happens here with a quote by Blessed Carlo Acutis. If you expose yourself to the sun, you get tanned. Now, if you expose yourself to the source of holiness, you become holy. These adorers say to all who doubt his presence, the door to the chapel is open. In Woodside, Jessica Easthope, Currents News. 
A new survey has found the body of Christ is crucial in fostering vocations to the priesthood. The Center for Applied Research in the Apostolate, or CARA, talked to more than 80% of the upcoming 2024 ordinands in both religious and diocesan seminaries. And they found 75% of them regularly prayed before the Blessed Sacrament prior to entering the seminary. 71% also prayed the rosary and another 40% practiced meditative prayer with scripture. One current priest in the Diocese of Brooklyn also says praying before the body of Christ led him to the priesthood. Father James Rodriguez, pastor of St. Rose of Lima Church in Rockaway Beach, remembers the exact moment he literally answered God's call. It was 25 years ago. He was praying quietly before the Blessed Sacrament, asking the Lord for help figuring out his vocation. That's when a random older woman, also praying quietly at the church, turned to him and said he should become a priest. Father Rodriguez shrugged it off at first until he realized it was the answer he'd been waiting for. I found myself thinking about it and trying to fight it, and I couldn't. I couldn't say no. It was weird. You know, it was just impossible for me to, to imagine my life doing anything other than feeding God to his people. Now, in his role as a pastor, Father Rodriguez encourages other Catholics to spend time in a chapel or church praying before the body of Christ, just like he did. Still to come on this Currents News Special Edition, we look ahead to the next step of this campaign, the National Eucharistic Revival, where tens of thousands will come together for praise and worship. And many will walk thousands of miles just to get there. We'll introduce you to one of those perpetual pr pilgrims and find out how she's preparing for the journey. Plenty of people who attended the Diocese of Brooklyn's Eucharistic Revival are now gearing up for the next step, the National Eucharistic Congress coming this July to Indianapolis. It's the first National Eucharistic Congress in 83 years, and around 80,000 people are expected to attend the historic event that promises to be a Catholic experience unlike any other. Starting on July 17th, the five-day event centered in Indianapolis's Lucas Oil Stadium will feature masses, processions, and plenty of opportunities for catechesis. But how will everyone get there? It's a pilgrimage and an unprecedented one in the United States. Pilgrims from across the country will be traveling 6,500 miles in the 60 days leading up to the Congress. They'll walk one of four different routes from each corner of the country, passing through 65 dioceses just to get to Indianapolis. And of course, the Eucharist will be with them every step of the way. While some will only be walking for part of that pilgrimage, about two dozen have been chosen to complete the entire route. I'm really excited to travel the country, Jesus. To see all the different people we'll encounter from different cultures, different backgrounds. To just watch people encounter the Lord and just come to know and love the Eucharist the way that like He awakened me in my life. I'm, yeah, I'm just really excited to see people come fully alive in His presence. Those were just three of the 24 perpetual pilgrims taking part in that historic pilgrimage. The Coast to Coast pilgrimage is modeled after Jesus' journey to Emmaus 2,000 years ago. One of those routes, the Elizabeth Ann Seton route, will come right through the Diocese of Brooklyn. The pilgrimage will begin in New Haven, Connecticut on May 18th with the Pentecost Vigil. The pilgrims will travel 10 to 15 miles each day for a total of 975 miles through nine states. New York City resident Zoe Dongas will be making that trek and she joins us now. Hi Zoe. Hi. Thanks for being here. So this is not a short walk. So <laughs> tell us how do you prepare for something like this? Yeah, it is definitely like spiritual preparation and physical preparation. Um, it's definitely like spending time with Jesus in prayer, getting ready, kind of collecting intentions of those that we want to pray with on the route. Um, and then definitely a lot of physical preparation. I've been walking to work instead of taking the train. Oh, that's a good been idea. Pretty fun. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And you're a hiker, so this is yes, nothing exactly. new to you. It's All right, fun. that's good. <laughs> so even the application, the interview process to be one of these perpetual pilgrims was pretty long. So what made you want to do this? Yeah, it's really interesting. The Lord like plants different things on your heart in a mysterious way. Um, I've been kind of feeling this call for like adventure. And as you said, like I've, I've been bringing people on hikes out of the city and kind of 
figuring out, I really wanted to go on the Camino last year that didn't end up working out, mm. but I was like really kind of seeking adventure and also at the same time really seeking a way to go deeper with our Lord. And when I kind of just stumbled upon the Eucharistic pilgrimage, I was like, this is like, this is the combination of two things that I really, really love. Um, and so it was the kind of a couple months of doing uh, an initial application and then some interviews with different people involved with the National Eucharistic Congress. Um, and then I got invited to participate in end of January, I think. Wow. So how exciting. Yeah. So you're going to be gone for a while. Uh, do you have to make any sacrifices to be away for that long to do this? Sure. Yeah, I do. There's just a couple of things, you know, you just have to to be kind of walk, walking with open hands. Um, and yeah, sacrifice is definitely something that I'm learning through this process of just kind of being away for two months. Um, but God has a way of, of working things out. So um, I've been really blessed to have a lot of people support me in, in this kind of transition into something really intense for two months. Yeah, and so when you look forward to this pilgrimage, what are some of the stops along the route that you're looking forward to most? Okay. <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> I think it's going to be really, really cool when it comes through. I'm biased for through the Archdiocese of New York and the Diocese of Brooklyn. Oh, of course, of course. The transition point, we're going to do benediction on the Brooklyn Bridge between the Arch and between the Diocese of Brooklyn. And just to like get everyone together and to celebrate our Eucharistic Lord on the Brooklyn Bridge, one of the most iconic places here in New York City, is going to be it's going to be pretty wild. And how do you pack for something like this? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> Two months walking. <laughs> yeah, we're really lucky. We have a van that's that will be driving mm -hmm. and following us, so I don't have to carry everything on my back, okay. which is helpful. That's good. Mm -hmm. So it's just a lot of like making sure I have the right sunscreen and have pants that will last me for two months and <laughs> shoes that will not fall apart at, in June. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, well, it sounds very exciting. Zoe Dongas, <laughs> thanks so much for being here and good luck on your journey. Thank you so much. All right, to learn more about the National Eucharistic Pilgrimage or the Congress in Indianapolis, visit their website at eucharisticrevival.org. And that is this Currents News special. I'm Christine Perkins. Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Before we go, one final look at your faith that was on display at the Diocese of Brooklyn's Eucharistic Revival. Hope to see you again next time.